All right. Today is the 1st of September. Yay. Yes, almost fall already. So yeah. it feels and a little cooler. Uh, well, it's, it's going to keep getting cooler. So anyway, for all of you that have stuck with us through the summer, why, God bless good you. on you. Yeah, God bless you. <laughs> Of course, probably some of you went up to the cool country and was watching us from up there, but that's all right. We love you anyway. But That's for you, Georgette. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, today we're going to start on Acts chapter 10. Yeah. And very Here important chapter for, I would say, most of us, probably all of us, if you're not of a Jewish background or Jewish heritage, why yeah. it's vital for you because this is when God opened the door well not when God opened the door when uh, God opened the door for the Gentiles long long before this but is finally when the early Christians began to recognize it yeah. that God was a God of the universe of the world not just a God of the Jews yeah. <laughs> so let's just jump in here all people in uh, chapter 10, verse 1, it says in Caesarea, there lived a Roman army officer named Cornelius, who was the captain of the Italian regiment. He was a devout, God-fearing man, as was everyone in his household. Mm -hmm. He gave generously to the poor, and he prayed regularly to God. One afternoon, about 3 o'clock, he had a vision in which he saw an angel of God coming toward him. Cornelius, the angel said. Cornelius stared at him in terror. It's usually what happens when an angel appears to you. Yeah. <laughs> what is it, sir? He asked the angel. The angel replied, Your prayers and gifts to the poor have been received by God as an offering. Now send some men to Joppa and summon a man named Simon Peter. He's staying with Simon, a tanner who lives near the seashore. As soon as the angel was gone, Cornelius called two of his household servants mm -hmm. and a devout soldier, one of his personal attendants, and he told them what had happened and sent them off to Joppa. Bingo. So up until this point, the church really had been reaching out to the Jewish uh, community. Mm -hmm. they, there was some, uh, you know, Philip had gone up to Samaria who they were, uh, I guess you would call them uh, shirt-tailed Jews, you know. They, they were mixed breed, but they did follow a lot of the Jewish tradition and the Jewish law. And they were uh, mixed breed Jews. Uh, we had the uh, Ethiopian eunuch who was, uh, Philip also led to the Lord, but also he was uh, probably a Jewish convert because he would, came to Jerusalem from Ethiopia to worship. And uh, he was reading the book of Isaiah and didn't understand it. But uh, now we've got some people here that are definitely have no affiliation with the Jews. Yeah. This is. Uh, Cornelius, who's a, a Roman soldier, and as much as the the uh, Orthodox Jews, you might say, the regular Jews hated the Samaritans. They hated the Romans even more because the Romans were the conquerors of of Israel, and they were the ones that were ruling Israel at that time. Yeah. So they were not uh, the Romans were not favored people of the Jews, and I'm sure most Jews never thought God would ever. Yeah save a Roman soldier. <laughs> of course, they didn't think God would save any. Most of them didn't think God would save any Gentiles. But anyway, he has his vision. He sends a couple of his servants and uh, uh, one of his uh, personal attendants, a devout, so, devout soldier, and tells him, this is what the angel told me, so you need to go to Joppa and look for this guy named uh, Simon Peter. He's staying with uh, Simon a Tanner. You notice... There's no question about this, uh, this angel business. There's no um, second thought about it or, you know, was this really an angel or not an mm -hmm. angel or what was going on here? Just yeah. So they all believed in angels. Well, certainly Cornelius did because he sent the... Uh, you know, as soon as the angel spoke to him, why he sent people to get Peter. And you might just mention here, you know, uh, Cornelius says he was a devout, God-fearing man. Now, he, uh, 
probably knew enough about the Jewish religion to believe in, in the God that they served. He just hadn't become a Jewish convert. He, uh, he feared God and said everyone in his household feared him. Uh -huh. And he was a generous man. He prayed, he gave to the poor. And uh, even though, like say, even though he wasn't a Jewish convert, I believe he believed in the, in the God of the Jews. Uh -huh. And uh, he worshiped him in, you know, in his own way, mm -hmm. prayed regularly, gave generously. And uh, because of that, that's why, apparently, that's why God chose him to be the first one, you might say, to open the door to the Gentiles. Uh -huh. But he was a man of faith. Definitely a man of faith. Well, let's see what happens with Peter. Yeah. It says, the next day, as Cornelius' messengers were nearing the town, Peter went up to the flat, on the flat roof to pray. It was about noon, and he was hungry. But while a meal was being prepared, he fell into a trance. This may have been a sleep or who knows. But anyway, it says he saw the, saw the sky open. Something like a large sheet was let down by its four corners. Mm -hmm. And in the sheet were all sorts of animals, reptiles, and birds. And then a voice said to him, Get up, Peter. Kill and eat them. Oh, no, Lord, Peter declared. I've never eaten anything that our Jewish laws have declared impure and unclean. But the voice spoke again. Do not call something unclean if God has made it clean. The same vision was repeated three times. Yeah. And then the sheet was pulled, suddenly pulled up to heaven. Peter was very perplexed. What could this vision mean? And then just then the men sent by Cornelius found Simon's house. Standing outside the gate, they asked for a man named asked if a man named Simon Peter was staying there. Meanwhile, as Peter was puzzling over the vision, the Holy Spirit said to him, three men have come looking for you. Go down, get up, go downstairs and go with them without hesitation. Don't worry for I've sent them. So Peter went down and said, I am the man you're looking for. Why have you come? So let's talk about this a little bit. Peter okay. has this vision. He sees all these animals. Some of them apparently were unclean animals and and this voice from heaven speaks and says, Peter, get up, kill and eat. And of course, Peter is horrified. Lord, I've never eaten anything that was unclean. And I, I wouldn't do it. Yeah, according to the Jewish law. And so Peter still has a lot of his old religious trappings, you might say, hanging on to him. And you know, that's, that's true with all of us. If we especially have been raised in a real strict religious background where yeah. you've been told, you know, like some, some unfortunately, some religions, and they make it seem like anything that is pleasurable or fun has to be sin. You know, that women have to dress in certain ways, you know, cover mm -hmm. their body completely. They can't wear mm -hmm. makeup or can't wear jewelry or any of those things, you know, just very strict. And, and I'm and not saying some, you know, some religions also follow a strict diet. Yeah, that's true. Some of them follow very strict dietary things. And, yeah. um, Still, and I'm not saying those things are are always bad. It, but it depends on why you do them. You know, if you're doing them just because that's the rules and regulations have been laid down, then that's for the wrong purpose. The Bible says the only way we please God is through faith. Yeah. And if you do through things through fear, fear that God's going to put a disease yeah. on you or punish you because you don't do those things, uh, you're doing them for the wrong reason. Yeah. But really that applies to everything. You know, if you eat a certain, have a certain uh, dietary restrictions because of health reasons or because you just feel that's good, that's fine. But if you think God loves you more because you follow certain rigorous uh, dietary things, vegetarian or whatever, um, you're mistaken because God, God doesn't base his love on that. No. You know, it's, again, it's not wrong, but it's why you do it. Same thing, well, with tithing. Tithing's a good thing, but why do you tithe? Do you tithe out of fear? Because if you don't tithe, God's going to get you and God's going to make you go bankrupt. And, 
you know, we should tithe, but we should tithe out of faith. Because first of all, it's being obedient to God, but also God promises if we tithe, he'll open up the windows of heaven and pour out blessings. Now, that doesn't mean he's gonna pour out money on you. He, you know, he'll supply your needs, but those blessings are in so many other areas other than just financial. He will bless you financially, but uh, he blesses us in so many other ways, in health and just in happiness and, and uh, just good relationships with your family, just so many ways that we could, you know, we could talk about. But what we do, we do out of faith, not out of fear. And that's kind of what Peter was here. He was afraid to eat anything that was declared impure or unclean. Uh -huh. So God's working on him. And, and he, this is the same way with all of it. Like I say, people that come out of real strict religious background, they don't change overnight. I mean, well, in one sense they do, but they don't get rid of all that stuff overnight no, no, usually. No. It takes a while because they still feel uncomfortable. They've been taught all their life, this is the way you do it. Uh -huh. And then all of a sudden it's like, well, that's not, you know, that's not a requirement of God. God doesn't require that. And it may be off a little bit, but just why did God give those laws in the first place? Why did God give the, the dietary laws and, uh, well, laws like you can't wear a, a, a garment that's made of two different uh, materials. You can't mix like uh -huh. uh, linen and wool together or cotton and wool. Uh, what was the importance of those things? Well, if I read the, my Bible correctly, it was to test their obedience to see yeah. if they would do what he Required there's, of them. there's two different types of laws in the Old Testament. There's moral laws and there's discipline laws. The moral laws are like the Ten Commandments. Uh -huh. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Yeah. Thou shalt not lie. Those things never change. Those are things that we still need to obey. Yeah, of course. Uh, but then there was disciplinary laws. Uh, partially, the, the dietary laws could have been for their health reasons because... Many of the animals that were considered unclean were also ones that could carry diseases. Uh, pork, you know, is uh, quite often has parasites. If it's not cooked properly, why well, it can cause problems. And some of the animals were, were uh, what do you call them, uh, scavenger animals, eating dead flesh and uh, yeah. things that could cause you problems. Uh, but a lot of it was just obedience. When they had to decide every day, am I going to do, you know, what God says or not what God says when it came to eating? You know, and most people eat three times a day, so they had to make that decision three times a day. And it's kind of to remind us that we have to make those decisions several times a day, too. Am I going to do the right thing? Or am I going to do the wrong thing? Uh, the mixture is like there's only one God, and uh -huh. a lot of the Jews got involved in taking uh, precepts or what do you want to call them, principles or uh, uh, thoughts from other religions, taking yeah. bits from other religions. Uh -huh. And God's, I think that was partly to show them you got to stay pure. You got to stay pure. You can't mix. You know, you can't be a Christian Buddhist. I know some people say you can. I, I'm sorry, but I disagree with that. You know, you can't add Jesus to all your other gods. He's He is the only God. He is the Lord of all. So you can't mix him with, you know, designer religion, as they call it now. You take a little bit of this and a little bit of that and mix it all together, and God says that's an abomination. No, that's not the way. <laughs> and so a lot of that has to do with this. And, and those things were done away with with Jesus. They're, we're not... Uh, under those strict restrictions anymore. The sacrifices, uh -huh. they were just a, a foreshadowing of the sacrifice of Jesus, the shedding of his blood and the, and the giving of his life. Those were all things that uh, were part of the discipline uh, code. The moral code, like I say, is still, still in effect, but the discipline code is not. And so Peter here is having difficulty. Yeah. Uh, 
because, like I say, he's always been a good Jewish man. He's always done what the law said. Uh, actually, way back in Mark, when, uh, when Jesus was still around, when he told Peter and the other disciples, well, also he's talking with the Pharisees, he said, it's not what goes into your mouth that defiles you, but it's what comes out of your mouth, speaking about your words and your thoughts. But he said, it's not what goes into your mouth. And uh, Mark made the, the remark after that, thus Jesus declared all foods to be clean. Of course, Mark wrote this several years after all this happened, so it's very possible that insight didn't come at the time mm -hmm. that Jesus spoke that. This That came later on. And so apparently Peter still has not got that insight that it's not what you eat, it's what comes out of your heart. So anyway, Peter's perplexed over this vision. What, what, what does it mean what anyway? And so now these men showed up, and while Peter's thinking about this, why the Spirit speaks to him. Uh -huh. These men have come and go with them without any hesitation. Mm -hmm. He has to, has to be told, you know, by the Holy Spirit, you need to go with them. <clears throat> Probably if it hadn't have been for that, he would have questioned that. Now, I don't know if I want to go with a, go to a, you know, a Gentile's house because that's just, that's not done. Verse 22, they said, we were sent by Cornelius, a Roman officer. He's a devout and God-fearing man, well respected by all the Jews. He apparently was one of those rare Romans that was liked by the Jews because he was a generous man and probably was fair with his dealings with the Jews, which a lot of the Romans were not. They were very, could be very cruel to him, but apparently he was a man that was... Uh, did not mistreat the Jews and was fair with them and the dealings with them. And he said, a holy angel instructed him to summon you to his house so he can hear your message. Mm -hmm. So Peter invited the men to stay for the night. That's a step for him there to invite these Gentiles yeah. to come and spend the night with him. It says the next day he went with him, accompanied by some of the brothers from Joppa. So he took some other Christian men along with him, probably, again, Jewish Christians, because that's pretty much all there was at this time. They arrived in Caesarea the next day, the following day. Cornelius was waiting for them and had called together his relatives and close friends. So he went out and got everybody, called, got all his relatives and close friends and maybe some of his soldier buddies or whatever. He just said, come on, you know, I got this guy coming. He's going he's gonna to give us some news, some good news. As Peter entered his house, Cornelius fell at his feet and worshiped him. But Peter pulled him up and said, stand up. I'm a human being just like you. <laughs> you know, don't worship me. I'm not a God. I'm not... I'm not your savior, yeah. you know, I'm just, I'm just a human being like you. So they talked together, they went inside where many others were assembled. And Peter said, told them, you know, it's against our law for a Jewish man to enter a Gentile home like this or to associate with you. But God has shown me that I should no longer think of anyone as impure or unclean. So I came without objection as soon as I was sent for. Now, Tell me why you sent for me. So ordinarily, they wouldn't have even gone, Peter wouldn't have gone into a Jewish house, or I mean a Gentile house. Okay. A Jewish man did not enter into a Gentile's home and have any association with him. But because of the vision that he had and the fact that the Holy Spirit told him to, to go with these men, uh -huh. that they, he had sent them, that they, he was to go with them. So Peter was obedient. He says, now, now, why why'd you send for me? What do you want? And Cornelius replied, well, four days ago, I was praying in my house about this same time at three o'clock in the afternoon. Suddenly, a man in dazzling clothes was standing in front of me. Maybe he didn't even know he was an angel, but he knew he was something special. Mm -hmm. He said, he told me, Cornelius, your prayers have been heard and your gifts to the poor have been noticed by God. You know, God notices us, the things that we do. That's, that's an interesting uh, word. Yeah, they've been noticed by God. Uh -huh. You know, you think, what, seven billion people in the world, how would God notice what 
what I'm doing, you know. But or he notices. How he gives. Yeah, he notices what we do. Of course, he notices the wrong things we do too. But he, he does take notice of the offer. He does. He takes notices. You know, yeah. just like Jesus was watching when they were putting money into the into the uh, treasury at the temple, and he sure. saw the woman put in the two mites, and uh -huh. boy, he made a big deal about it. <laughs> Well, God made a big deal about it with Cornelius. He yeah. saw that he would have been given to the poor, and it was noticed. And it says, now send messengers to Joppa and summon for a man, summon a man named Simon Peter. He's staying at the uh, house of Simon, a tiner who lives near the seashore. So he's just reiterating what uh, the angel said to him. He said, so I sent for you once, and it was good of you to come. Yeah. Now we're all here waiting before God to hear the message the Lord has given you. And I sent for you to find out what you have to say to us. I believe God's given you a message for us. And then Peter replied, I see very clearly that God shows no favoritism. It's finally beginning to get the point. Yeah. God doesn't have favorites. That's what the sheet and all the different animals was about. Yeah. There's no clean and unclean with God. Uh -huh. He said, in every nation, he accepts those who fear him and do what is right, whether a Jew or a Gentile, whether, you know, you live in the United States or you live in Saudi Arabia or uh -huh. you live in uh, Russia or whatever. In every nation, he accepts those who fear him and does what's right. And this is the message of good news to the people of Israel that there is peace with God through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. That is such good This news. is the good news that he came to preach. Yeah. Now, I don't know how much these, this Roman soldier knew about Jesus. I'm sure he'd heard of him. Uh, certainly, you know, his fame was pretty widespread. Yeah. And I'm not, you know, the Bible doesn't tell us how long this was after Jesus' uh, crucifixion, but it wasn't, couldn't have been too many you know, more than just a few years at the most. He says, you know what happened through Judea, beginning in Galilee, after John began preaching the message of baptism. And you know that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. So Peter's presuming that they've heard this. Uh -huh. And again, it was so widespread that it's very unlikely that they wouldn't have heard, you know, about all the miracles that Jesus was doing that... Uh, he was performing miracles and healing people. Mm -hmm. It says, you know, God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. And then Jesus went around doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil for God was with him. So again, he's reiterating what, uh, what Jesus came to do. Yeah. He came to bring peace. You know, he's, he is the Lord of all. He came to bring healing, and they came with power. And it says, and we apostles are witnesses of all he did throughout Judea and Jerusalem. And they put him to death by hanging him on a cross. Yeah. Of course, he knew that. He was, it was the Roman soldiers who put him to death. Since this guy was up in Caesarea, he probably wasn't part of that, although he could have been in Jerusalem at another time, but uh, he apparently wasn't personally involved. But... God raised him to life on the third day. Then God allowed him to appear, not to the general public, but to us whom God had chosen in advance to be his witnesses. So it was just a select few that, that Jesus appeared to. Now, Paul talked about uh, not only the apostles, but 500 others. So there was more than just the 12, uh, but it was still a limited amount out of all the Jews in Jerusalem, only 500 and some people uh, that Jesus appeared to uh, said, but they were the ones that God had chosen in advance to be his uh, witnesses. We were those who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. Uh -huh. And he ordered us to preach everywhere and to testify that Jesus is the one appointed by God to be the judge of all, the living and the dead. He's the one all the prophets testified, saying that everyone who believes in him will have their sins forgiven through his name. Now, again, this is just a synopsis of 
Paul, I mean, of Peter's preaching here. Probably he preached a whole lot more than this. Uh, this is just a couple of paragraphs here. And uh, knowing Peter and knowing most of these apostles, I'm sure they preach more than two paragraphs. But basically, he's giving them the message. This man believed in God, just like most of the Jews did. But I'm sure he didn't understand yet who Jesus was. Like say, he'd probably heard about him, heard all the miracles he had done, probably even heard the rumors about him being raised from the dead, but probably didn't have a clear understanding yet what all what all this meant yes. and so forth. And so Peter basically just tell him, God, uh, J God sent Jesus in the flesh. He's the one that's going to be the judge of us all, the living and the dead. He's the one the Old Testament uh, prophets prophesied, testified about. Yeah saying that everyone who believes in him will have their sins forgiven through his name. It's only in the name of Jesus that people can be saved. It's good to believe in God, but to know that he sent Jesus to pay the price for our sins. Yeah. That's, that's the key, and that's what probably the knowledge that, the, that uh, Cornelius and his family were lacking, yeah. to know what Jesus had done, the purpose of his death. That he wasn't just some fanatic that got uh, crosswise with the with the Jews and crosswise with the Romans, and they decided to get rid of him. But he was the one sent by God, he was. and that only through believing in him can you have your sins forgiven. Yes. Well, something happened all of a sudden. Yeah. Said even was Peter as Peter was saying these things, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who were listening to the message. Yes. The Jewish believers who came with Peter were amazed that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles too. How'd they know he'd been poured out? They heard them speaking in other tongues and praising God. The same thing had happened on the day of Pentecost. Same thing. It may not have been the same thing about the, the flames and the mighty rushing wind, but all of a sudden, they're speaking in tongues and they're praising God in different languages. And uh, they were amazed. The same uh, thing well, happened well, in Samaria. Yeah, well, wait a minute. I mean, these are Gentiles. This is not supposed to happen. <laughs> it's only supposed to be the Jews. This is the Holy Spirit was, you know, reserved for the Jews, wasn't it? Well, apparently not. Apparently, he was. he's available to all of us. And so they saw that I mean, there was no question now. I mean, how do you argue with that? No. When the same thing happened to them, uh, to the Gentiles here, that happened to them on the day of Pentecost, all of a sudden it's like there's no arguing about it now. And then Peter asks, can anyone object to their being baptized now that they've received the Holy Spirit just as we did? So he gave orders for them to be baptized in the name of Jesus. Afterwards, Cornelius asked him to stay with them for several days. So now they've been baptized in the Holy Spirit. Peter says, nobody, can anybody object to him now being baptized in water, being baptized, as he says, in the name of Jesus to make official their, you might say, to make public their, their commitment to the Lord, being united with him and identified with him and his death, their own resurrection. And so they were all baptized. It sounds like the whole group of them. And it says afterwards, Cornelius asked him to stay for a while. I'm sure Cornelius wanted to know more. He said, you know, I, I understand this much, but I said, we still need to need, need to know more. So could you stay with us for several days and, and teach us, you know? Show us from the Old Testament. Of course, the only scriptures they had then were the Old Testament. Show us from you know from your scriptures. I'll bet you where you all this the is book true. Of Joel. Probably the Book of Joel to talk about yeah the Holy Spirit falling. Probably Isaiah talking about you know Isaiah fifty three talking about the suffering Savior being yeah. pierced for our iniquity or for he our. He was talking uh, yeah. about the Holy Ghost though, and that's in in Joel. Right. In yeah. Joel he would have talked about the Holy Spirit, but he would have also talked about Jesus from the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he spent, apparently spent some time there instructing them. But, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, this, 
would have happened somehow, but this, uh, you know, I mean, the, the news going to the Gentiles, but it just so happened that it started out with a Roman soldier. Yes. That God chose him to bring the good news uh, and to, to open up the doors. In the next chapters, we'll see there was, uh, there was some conflict over this. In fact, as you read Paul's epistles, you'll find out there was conflict over this yeah. for a long time <clears throat> concerning uh, whether or not people could be saved and without following the Jewish traditions, without being circumcised and without, you know, following their dietary requirements and, and so forth. Uh, in other words, there's some of them that, you know, if you're going to be a believer in Jesus, you got to become a full-fledged Jew. And that was not what, uh, not what Peter was teaching here. God loves everybody and whoever and every nation. Those that fear him and do what's right, God accepts them. And so that means you. I don't care what nationality you are, what uh, your background is or anything else. Jesus went to the cross for you. He went to the cross for every one of us. Yes. And all we have to do is accept that and believe in him, trust in him for our salvation. And just as happened with these this Roman centurion and his family and his servants if you accept that God receives you God accepts you and uh, that's that's the good news that's the good news. that's the good news and that well that's the best news yeah. <laughs> that's the best news in the world you know your uncle, your millionaire uncle dying and leaving you his fortune is nothing compared to this news because that money won't do you any good in heaven. It won't buy your way into heaven. You know, whatever good news you might have heard other than that, I mean, that's, that's fine. But this is the good news that is, all, is for all eternity. It doesn't, doesn't last just in this life, but it's good news for all eternity. Yes. So, you got anything else that to add? good news, Joe. That is good news. Yes. You got anything else to add? No, you pretty much said it all. Okay. Well, not all, but... Well. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, let's just pray, and we will end for today, then. And, and thank you all for joining yes, us today. Yes, thank you for joining with us, and uh, yeah. look forward to seeing you again next week. Yeah. Well, Father, we thank you for the good news that you sent. First of all, Lord, that you sent Jesus to, uh, to show us, Lord, how much you love us, Lord. And he showed that love by giving up his life, Father. First of all, he showed that love by leaving heaven, that place of perfection, Lord, to come down here in the midst of all this mess and, and living here, but then even to the point of giving up his life, Father, as a sacrifice for our sins. But the good news is that he didn't stay dead. He rose again on the third day. And because he rose victorious over death, we know that each of us that accepts him as our Lord and Savior uh, are also victorious over death, Father. We may suffer physical death, Lord, but we'll not suffer spiritual death. But we will spend eternity with you, Lord. That's the gift that you've given us, Lord. Eternal life through the Lord Jesus Christ. And as we see here today, Lord, where Peter went to a, a Gentile's house, Lord, and they received uh, salvation, they received the Holy Spirit, just like the Jews did, Lord, that gives us hope, Lord, and shows us that, that you, you don't have any favorites, Lord. You, you may have chosen the Jews, Lord, to, to send the Savior through and to give your law through, but really you love all nations. You love people of all nations, yes. Father. And all we have to do is receive, receive what Jesus did on that cross, Lord. Receive that sacrifice, Lord, and receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior. And we will be forgiven and we will be saved, Father. Oh, thank you for that, Father. Thank you for that wonderful news, Lord. We just give you praise and thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Well, we appreciate you joining with us. And like I say, we look forward to seeing you again next week. And just pray you have a good week. And pray that things get a little cooler here in Yuma. <laughs> yeah. So, they will. God bless.
soon as you get your button fixed. <laughs> okay, well, my remote's not working, so I'm going to have to reach across here. Sorry about that.